Welcome to a series here for the WSET Level 3. This is a session series on Spain. So let's have a look at what we will be covering in this. It's a 10-part thriller. We are parts 1 to 10. Now it goes through everything you need to know following the syllabus for Spain according to the WSET Level 3. Uh, and the first uh, four videos, that is climate, black grapes, white grapes, and the upper Ebro on Rioja is available as free content here on the world of YouTube. But parts five through to 10, that's only available on my portal over at winewithjimmy.com. Please go along there and have a look to sign up. So um, first thing to note really is that Spain has a nice long history with wine production, but really only in the recent times has it come into prominence around the world. Now, uh, Spain goes back to probably the Phoenicians, probably the local tribes here, Romans, of course, cultivating the vine across major parts here. Bit of a hiatus when the Moors came through from the south, from North Africa, uh, and then entering into Spain's golden age uh, with the start of the conquistador, um, the uh, reconquista, sorry, and, uh, and gaining parts of Spain back. And of course, then expanding into the new world. Suddenly, Spain's wine market started to emerge off the back of that. Um, the styles of wine that it's well known for, well, we definitely have very traditional barrel-aged red wines, um, all the way up to modern fruity fresh white wines, but it really is the barrel-aged and typically American oak barrel-aged reds that are very famous. Now, although many international varieties have been planted in many of Spain's wine regions, it really is today the country's indigenous or native varieties which are really gaining traction and really gaining international acclaim. Your likes, of course, of Tempranillo, uh, the likes of Garnacha, Albariño, Viura, for example. We'll discuss those, of course, across this series. So, um, Spain broadly has three climatic zones to look at. There is the Iberian Peninsula in your map. To get some geographical idea of where we are, the Iberian Peninsula is connected to the south and southwest of France uh, and separated by a very large mountain range called the Pyrenees or the Pyrenees uh, in Spanish. So that's this big area from pretty much from San Sebastian to Emporta. It's a big mountain range just here. And then we have the whole Iberian Peninsula. Now, Portugal sits at the western side, firmly on the Atlantic, uh, and the rest of this, this colourful area, is Spain. And you'll see um, four major colours, maybe five actually here. Um, the blue areas we're not going to worry too much about for the level three. These are mountainous climatic zones for viticulture of which there are vines found in those, but we're broadly looking at the green, the orange, and the yellow areas. And these are our three broad climatic areas. First of all, coloured in green, because we typically call this green Spain, pretty much from San Sebastian all the way across to Galicia, where you find the likes of Santiago de Compostela. Now, this whole area known as green Spain is the north and the northwest. For us, in terms of the level three syllabus, it's firmly this area here in the northwest, Galicia. Now, this area, along with the north coast of Spain, has what would be classified as a moderate maritime climate. And that's really dictated and dominated by the effect of the Atlantic. So we'll often see here that we are on the coast, all the way from San Sebastian, Bilbao, Santander, A Coruña, Santiago, all of these areas are heavily affected by the Atlantic. So therefore, it is moderated by it. And it's going to be very important in terms of things like rainfall as well. Let's have a look at a picture here. Uh, there you are. So 
Of course, being dominated by the Atlantic, rainfall is the biggest threat. So the risk of rainfall here is high. And this is something really to talk about because uh, rainfall can be the savior of many regions. Of course, it brings life into the vineyard and into the plant, into the vine, but excessive amounts of rainfall can cause problems. If we talk through the season, starting, uh, let's say at springtime, when the vine starts to come out of its shell, rainfall around this time is actually res relatively positive. Uh, so we are talking about the vine needing water for growth. Uh, so that is for all of its shoots, its green parts that are opening up from the dormant winter season. So rainfall's pretty, pretty good around that time. Of course, we don't want too much, but enough really here at this time to get things kicking off. But then the vine goes through flowering and fruit set. Rainfall at this time can cause significant problems and cause issues of something called millerandange. Uh, so this is where there is unsuccessful pollination of some of the flowers. This overall reduces the yield. If you are not too sure about uh, this terminology, please do refer back to grape growing uh, presentations that I've done for your level three or uh, the section in your textbook as well around grape growing, so the vineyard characteristics. Um, so that's flowering. Then we go into really the ripening of the berries. Uh, and at this time, the temperature starts to rise. It's summer. If we get too much water and heat, we get an increase of disease pressure. And that is fungal characteristics, things like uh, the mildews and even rot towards the end of the season. This can, of course, significantly decrease the yield uh, of the area. And then towards the end of the season, too much rainfall can cause problems with waterlogging in the vineyard, but moreover, dilution in the grapes, which causes a um, lower quality in, in the final product of the wine. Uh, rainfall in areas like Galicia can easily be in excess of 1,000 millimetres per year in places like Rias Baixas, south of Santiago. Uh, so there must be steps taken to counter the problems of rainfall. Uh, and they will be discussed in the Green Spain se section. I'll give you a little taster. Canopy management, making sure that the canopies are left quite open with good aeration, typically with large vines here called pergolas to allow good air circulation so the fungus doesn't spread uh, across the vine too much. Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, please pop them in the comment below this video. Uh, if you've been to Spain, you've enjoyed Spain, maybe you have a question about Spanish winemaking, grape growing, or anything in the content of these videos, please make sure you comment or question. Also click like and subscribe as it helps you and me. You can also find the social media at the bottom of every slide as well. Um, the second area we're going to look at is in fact on the opposite side of Spain. So we're just looking at green Spain in the north. We're now looking at this yellow area. So everywhere really from uh, uh, Catalonia, so Barcelona through Tarragona through to Valencia uh, and down towards Murcia as well, is really the Mediterranean side of the country. So this is Catalonia to the Levant and we have a warm Mediterranean climate just here, and it becomes increasingly hot further south. Actually, it gets classified as arid as you come down here, but for you and your syllabus, we are looking at Catalonia and Valencia uh, in this area. Okay, let's take another look here at a picture. So many of the vineyards here, we now know that it's really gaining in temperature, there's not the Atlantic influence to moderate this area. There is a slight influence from the Mediterranean. Uh, and if you've been there and you or you live there, the word slight may be very funny to you, but it is not as exaggerated as the Atlantic influence, which is on the north and northwest side of Spain. Now, <clears throat> in terms of moderating the heat here, the best thing to do is be close to the sea to have some moderating effect 
or to be at altitude. And this picture is to depict the altitude here in Valencia in this area. Uh, so um, you will find that vineyards are slightly being planted at higher elevations in areas like this uh, to counter the effects of the warm conditions. And then finally, this big expanse of orange on this map, everywhere pretty much from um, south of the Cantabrian mountain range uh, in places called Castilla y Leon, Rioja, uh, down towards the central Mazetta plain. Uh, so down here, Castilla La Mancha, Madrid, Extremadura. Uh, all this area here is our large expansive area, which is considered a hot continental climate. So <clears throat> you'll often hear people talk about a large plain here, an elevated plain, which is called the Mazetta Plain. Let me scribble this down for you so you are aware of what it is. Mazetta. Okay, um, and the Mazetta can be up here as well. There, it's pretty much central, the whole of central Spain. Although there are mountain ranges uh, that divide here. Uh, so the key thing about this is that the Mazetta in the center of Spain is cut off from um, sea or oceanic effects because you have Portugal protecting it from the west, you have um, North Spain and the Cantabrian Mountains protecting in the south, and of course you sit away from the Mediterranean as well. Um, and you have mountain ranges that further protect it. Um, mountain ranges in the south, things like the Cantabrians I mentioned, uh, and other mountain ranges dotted around central Spain that all hem in and create a continental based climate here. So it's a warm or hot continental climate. And there you go, there's the Mazetta Plain in that picture. In winter, temperatures here will fall below freezing. So in somewhere like Ribera del Duero, which is on the Duero River in the north Mazetta, you will find that temperatures in winter can drop to minus 10 degrees Celsius at ease. And in summer, the temperatures can raise very, very high. Uh, so you can easily be, say, in Ribera del Duero at 40 degrees Celsius fairly commonly. Um, rainfall in these areas is, of course, very limited. And that is because there is a lack of water around here. Any rain will come from the west and it typically um, will fall in small and sporadic amounts. Now, these intense conditions, extreme conditions, and certainly the summer extreme conditions can be moderated by firstly the diurnal range, which is where you have very hot daytimes and then very cold nights. And those cold nights are priceless in really um, refreshing the grapes and maintaining high acidities or by altitude of which there is lots of mountain ranges be the Cantabrian mountain range, the Sierra de la Demanda, the Sistema Ribérico, uh, the Sistema Beticos, you know there's lots of different mountain ranges in this central area which gives you altitude and cooler growing conditions. Now because rainfall is very low fungal disease pressure, that is warmth and water creating fungus, this is uh, very low in these places. So more consisting organic production in this landscape. Um, some general problems then to talk about. Um, now, with the exception of the northwest of Spain, Galicia, the green part on the last map, uh, most of Spain will go through heavy amounts of stress placed on the vines by the extreme heat, therefore drought and low rainfall. Uh, so conditions, steps must be taken in order to protect grapes, for example. Um, now in uh, some places we will have uh, shading, for example. I think I will actually go through that in a second, but let's just have a look here. Um, now, another thing is that there is a low availability of water in most of these places. So typically we will find a low density bush train system, and that is the best way to manage these extreme conditions. Therefore, to put it very simply, each of these vines has a large area to work with in order to gain the water and nutrients that it needs. So you'll see often there's 
1.5 to even 2.5 meters between each vine, which means it can have a long, uh, a long sort of catchment area of a root system to capture the rainfall when it does, of course, rain. Also, dense canopies can be grown to shade fruit from excessive heat and avoiding sunburn. Uh, so that is where we have uh, on a bush vine, a real sort of thick canopy, and then all the grapes are found shaded away from that intense sunlight, or there can be other types of training system in place as well. Where it is practical, practical and affordable, wire training is slowly being introduced to facilitate machine harvesting. Uh, and that's going to be in places like Catalunya, for example, uh, and where you find most bulk production like La Mancha as well. And uh, oh, spelt wrong, uh, but there should be pergola just here. Um, but <laughs> pregola <laughs> sounds fantastic, but it should be spelt as pergola. Let me uh, just uh, affect uh, change that for you. Nice and easy to do that. Um, there you go. I don't want you to go away thinking about maybe you'll remember it even more now, though, because uh, I have uh, I have put that. So let's put pergola there. There you go. So pergola vine training systems. Uh, you'll see it in this picture just here. Now, in these areas where it's where it's kind of uh, wet and damp, like the northwest of Spain, Galicia, this type of vine training training system, which is a large vine, will be adopted. So these are large vines, typically um, someone that's about uh, five, five foot six uh, can walk quite easily underneath. The, you'll be able to sort of uh, pick the grapes just above your head. So they are very tall vines with a big, thick, dense canopy, creating lots of shade, which is good for the grapes and then good air circulation. So you'll get fantastic air circulation through this area coming through here. Uh, and that means that fungus uh, finds it very difficult to sit there and spread grape to grape, for example. So very, very important in areas like Rias Baixas in Galicia. OK, so that is the first video done here on Spain on climate and grape growing. Please do join me for the black grape varieties next. Another free video where we'll be talking about the likes of Tempranillo, uh, things like Ganacha, for example, and Monastrel. Uh, once again, any comments, questions or concerns, please drop them below this video. I'd love to hear from you about your experiences in Spain or with Spanish wine, or if you have anything uh, around questions around the content here, please pop it down below. Um, you can also get in touch via social media. And if you do find yourself in the United Kingdom, please come and say hi for a class, a glass or a bottle. I've been Jimmy Smith. Ciao for now. Goodbye.